Good morning. I hope you're well. Just a quick announcement about the office hours. Normally on Wednesdays, I'm in my office in the library and 3004 from noon to 1 p.m. Today, my program, Globalization Studies, like many others, have an open house on Zoom. Hours starts at 12.30, so you will find me in the office even after 12.30, and in fact, until 2 or 2.20. But I'll be engaged in this, in the interaction with the virtual visitors of the open house. So uh, if you need to see me come, to talk to me after the class or come to the office before 12.30. Just a reminder also that there is the last digital assignment coming, the creation of a page in DocuWiki. And today I'll be continuing my demonstration of the basic and intermediate features of DocuWiki. I don't think I'll be able to complete my demonstration which means that I'll include a, an additional demo session next Wednesday, and I can do so comfortably because from now on we don't have apps, we're talking about Wikipedia, and we'll look at the inner works of Wikipedia, the platform on which Wikipedia runs, their coding, uh, etc. So I will continue, but keep in mind that the continuation of the demo will focus on the advanced features of DocuWiki, which are not a requirement for an excellent grade in the digital assignment due Friday. <laughs> They're just a requirement for anyone picking up DocuWiki as a digital tool for the final project. Okay? For the digital assignment that is due Friday, if you need more time, just let me know. Uh, before Friday, do it properly. And when you request an exception, an extension, sorry, specify a deadline that is comfortable for you. You don't need a big justification, extraordinary reasons to request an extension. You would only need to explain your circumstances sufficiently and you need uh, extraordinary reasons only if you're requesting a 10-day extension instead of saying, I need a few more days. Again, if you don't have the login into the test pages that will allow you to create a page, just request it, okay? Just send me an email and I'll create an account, a profile, and send you the username and password. If you need any technical support, any technical help with your page, I'll be available. Of course, don't expect me to be there to intervene at 8, 8 p.m. on Friday, past 6 p.m. on Friday. I'll just probably go out for dinner or, or relax, not check in my email until the next morning or Sunday afternoon and evening, okay? so. I'll be there to help you, but don't wait until the last moment, or if you do, you'll have to wait then yourself 24 or 48 hours before I can do something for you. But especially for this kind of assignment, it's easier if you schedule a Zoom meeting rather than just sending an email where I can put the page you're working on on the screen and I can fix the code and show you what the problem was with your page. So this is the continuation of the list that was posted last uh, Wednesday, last week. I don't think I showed you how to use images as clickable links. I'll just show you an example. But basically, this is done through the kind of code that is used for links in general. You see, for example, in here, in this demo page that I have created, Andrea D is just Andrea Demo. Uh, you can see that this image of Venice that was embedded in the page is also a link, right? You can see the cursor turns into an end, and if I click on there, 
I go to Lonely Planet and to the page in Lonely Planet devoted, which is a travel guide uh, website uh, devoted to Venice. And if I edit the page, I can show you what was done there to obtain that result, which is to open square brackets, open and close square brackets, because those are used for links. And then you still find the place I want to go, the place the link will direct the user to after, right, after the square brackets, and then a vertical bar is introduced, vertical bars that usually use for the labels, the tooltip, whatever accompanies the image when you move the cursor over it. In this case, after the vertical bar, you see that I find curly brackets that are used for media files, sound, and images, video as well. And there I find the link to the JPEG that I took from Wikipedia. Again, as much as possible, be fair, be honest, don't violate copyright laws by fetching images <coughs> from a website that is not yours, but you find in Wikipedia plenty of copyright free images for your needs. So I added the link to this JPEG file, and then just to suit my purposes, I added a question mark and the number of pixels that I wanted the image to be wide. If you just use one set of number, it'll be the width. Otherwise, you can also regulate the height, but I don't know why you would do that, because of course, if you just insert the number of pixels for the width, the height will adjust accordingly, and if you're trying to do it, the image will be compressed or squashed in, in uh, strange ways. And that's how you get a link that makes an image appear, and the image itself, can be clicked to go somewhere. When it comes to embedding YouTube videos, it was included in a previous demonstration, but since it is one of the requirements for the assignment, I'll show you once again briefly how it is done. You see here a video embedded in the front page. When I click edit for this particular section, you can see that I've used curly brackets because curly brackets are for media files, sound, images, videos. And in this case, I'm relying on a plugin that I added to my website, to my wiki. Therefore, after the curly bracket, you find a little bit of code. In this case, the code is the word YouTube, all in lowercase, because that's the standard in the coding language, either all uppercases or all uh, lower cases, that is usually the standard for coding. So the word YouTube, just one word, no capital letters, then an angular parenthesis, that is also part of the convention for the coding of the scripts for many plugins, and then see what I have here. I just have the identifying part of a YouTube link. When I go to YouTube, I find a full link that includes a unique identifier for the link. That's all I need in this case, not the full link, just that uh, sequence of lowercase and uppercase letters. Uppercase are a necessity in this case. Numbers that identifies a video on YouTube. And then, of course, it's good practice always to use a vertical bar to have a label, to have some kind of caption, in this case, the kind of tooltip that appears when I move my mouse over the video itself. Now, keep in mind that this only works if whoever posted the YouTube video on YouTube allowed, in their configuration of the video, allowed people to embed the video in other websites. This is not true of every video, right? Some videos cannot be played, some YouTube videos cannot be played on external sites because the creators want to preserve the integrity of their copyrights. So 
it is necessary in this case, in that case too, it's necessary for you to find another video that can be embedded. So if you don't see the video, if you have a, well, if you have text instead, if you see the code, it means that there is a mistake in the code. If you have one of those gray uh, squares, rectangles, that says this video can only be played on YouTube, then you have to find another video to embed, after all, uh, for the purpose of the creation of this page, since it is a sample page, you can uh, change slightly your, your choice, find something else, adjust the content accordingly. Tables are possible. You can create a table with rows and columns with headings in DocuWiki. Uh, they require a little bit of work because it's all text, but uh, you can have as complex a table as you want. You can regulate uh, the headings. The headings will be formatted differently on the top row, on the top column. You can regulate the cell al alignment. You can align anything inside a cell of a table, left, center, or right. You can also have merge cells. They're called spans uh, in the language of uh, DocuWiki. And I've posted a link that takes you directly to the formatting section of the wiki syntax this is the wiki syntax file the link to the wiki syntax file is on top of the page where your pages are being created as you can see here this is an example of a table where i only have top headers and everything else is content and i also have the merging of two cells and this is what produces this result i just want to review it with you because tables are something you may want to include in your page, depending on the nature of your page, and certainly something that is very common. And, and again, it's markdown language. Therefore, simple characters from uh, the, the keyboard are being used to mark this. So they're using uh, this kind of uh, symbol for the heading, which means that whenever you find it, whether it be at the top or within the first column, that cell will be formatted as a heading, and then vertical bars are used for the uh, cells, and the way you merge two cells is to write something all together and have two vertical bars at the end. I have to move the scroll bar horizontal scroll bar to show you that. So the way this spans through two cells is that there are two vertical bars at the end, but you still have one, two, three, and then the closing there and the same for the vertical bar, right? You have to find one at the beginning, one at the end. And also it is vital for this because the vertical bar would be shown in the text unless it is found at the beginning of the row, at the beginning of a line, sorry. So that's how the system knows by finding this symbol or this symbol at the beginning of a line that this is to be interpreted as a table. Otherwise, if you would just type those characters anywhere else in the middle of the text, they would be interpreted as text. If you scroll the wiki syntax, you find another example where you have the regular layout of an Excel table, right, with headings at the top and in the first column, nothing in the corner, right, or it could be the, the name of the table. And there, is, there are no cells spanning, but later there is an example of vertical span, and this is how it is done. So you find a vertical bar here because this tells the system that this has not uh, doesn't have any special formatting 
but then you find this either here and here as well to signify that this should be formatted the background of the cell the formatting of the text should be different and everything else is just uh, vertical bars for vertical spans that you see exemplified here you use columns so a column uh, column normal, normally would be displayed on, in the text, but within this context is interpreted as code. So three columns here ensure that this cell spans vertically. It could be any number of columns, okay? And you regulate the alignment by attaching text to a vertical bar, to the left or to the right, or placing it in between those bars. Okay. So some of this is not necessary, and you have here an example of a heading that is merged, right, because you have a symbol here, but three at the end. Some of this is not necessary. That is to say, the table would work even without the kind of symmetry that you see in here right, without these many spaces to align right to the right. What counts is that there is no space between the word to be uh, shown in this cell and the vertical bar. And the reason why you might want this is just for the clarity and elegance of the code. The same is true for code in general in this system. There are many places where you don't need to add spaces or blank lines in DocuWiki, but you do because that is elegant and clear code that will be easier to maintain than just bunching up everything together. Internal links are links to other pages from this wiki, and they can include a link to a specific section to a page. So let me show you. In order to get the internal link, when I look at the URL bar of the page, and of course, I, I cannot zoom in more than this, but when I look at the top of my browser, and I look at the URL address of the page, I don't need to bring everything into my link to make an internal link, because if I use anything that starts with HTTPS, it would be, or HTTP, it would be treated like an external link. In order to know what to include in an internal link, I need to go past the docu.php notation. Docu.php is what alerts the server that this is a page that needs to be treated with PHP program coding to transform the page into HTML. So everything else is where my website is found, andreafiri.com, wikitest 2020. Docu.php means this is a PHP page, this is a page from a wiki. What follows, in this case, 2022 slash test pages slash 43, is the part that I need for an internal link. So I can copy this. And I'll just put it here. As usual, As usual, I follow the standard format for links, which would be square brackets, right? Then I bring into this the last part of the link that I found at the top of my browser, and then I need to make the following changes. Slashes need to be converted into columns. 
to be recognized as internal links, right? So I just replaced those two slashes. I have only two, so that is done. But then of course, I have a lot of code before, like I have a location, I have slashes before. So I need to include one at the beginning as well, right? So I have two explicit expressed slashes that I replace with column and one that is implied because I have other stuff that I put at the beginning and that's it. Now, my link, which was uh, 2022 test pages, etc., has been transformed into a green link, which for this template and for a lot of templates in DocuWiki signifies internal link, whereas blue signifies external links. And automatically, the link has taken the title of the page as its label, which is the most convenient standard. This is something that you need to enter your, as an option into your configuration, right? Remember that the manager of a wiki is also the administrator. From the administration, you go to the configuration settings. One of the settings that you simply check on or off is use the title of a page for links. And this allows you to have elegant links inside the wiki without having to code every time the proper name of the page. Of course, this is something that is done uh, more smoothly and with a higher level of automation inside Notion, for example. But keep in mind that this is a kind of software that predates the generation of knowledge apps that includes Notion and also Evernote, although Evernote is not as, uh, as, as flexible in terms of producing links to internal notes, to other notes, even though, uh, as I said many times, things are changing quickly for Evernote. Evernote is releasing a new version at least once a month, sometimes twice a month, okay? But you've seen here how to create an internal link. As far as a specific section, let's see if we have a specific section in here. No. Let's create one. So we'll add five equal signs and we'll call this section quotes. Close this. Now, this would be a good example of code that is working versus code that is also clear and elegant. I don't need to do anything else, right? Everything that you see here is correct. If I clicked preview or save, I would have quotes as the title of this section, followed by my example of a quote. However, for, for elegance and clarity, it's good practice to add a blank line separating those simply because it's easier when I review the code to catch mistakes, to catch imperfection. I don't have to focus on a soup of characters all bunched up together, okay? Keep that in mind and that applies to programming languages in general. There are some things that are necessary in order for the program to work, to run. There are some things that some standards, stylistic standards that you follow simply because otherwise it would be harder to maintain, to review and maintain the code. So I have a section that is entitled quotes. And I can see it here. I can go to it and see what happens when I go to this section look at the top of the browser, see how it is changed. How is the address changed? And this is not a standard just limited to DocuWiki, but it's applied in general to HTML. I have the uh, this, this symbol, the number sign, and the word quotes, which is the title of this section. I would just have to incorporate this to have a link that goes there instead of going to the top of the page. 
So in here, I can add or copy quotes. And when I save and go back to it, now I have the title of that instead of the title of that section, instead of the title of the page. And when I click on it, I'm transported exactly to the quote section, which could be useful if you have a long page with many sections and you want to direct your viewers, your users, exactly to one place in particular. Let's go back to the first demo page. And this is an example of an interwiki link. Wikipedia can, uh, I'm sorry, DocuWiki can support links to another wiki in Wikipedia, in uh, DocuWiki, and also uh, automatic links also to Wikipedia. In this case, the code is square brackets for links, and WP in lowercase, as in Wikipedia, followed by the angular parenthesis, and then whatever you place here should be the title of a page in Wikipedia, and without having a long URL, I have a link that takes me to the article on Venice in Wikipedia. See? You see also that I have the emblem of Wikipedia next to it to indicate the nature of this. And this is where I'm being transported. Oops. So if I click on that, I have the article on Venice, Italy. Of course, it's not the only Venice, but it's the assumption of Wikipedia is that you want to see this page rather than a page on Venice, California. <laughs> but you can also see the alternatives by clicking on Venice Disambiguation, where Wikipedia will list, will list all the articles having to do with Venice, the many places in the United States called Venice, and uh, music, etc., connected to that. The way you create another page is very simple. In order to create a sub page, and this would be applicable especially to people working on a project with DocuWiki. For the assignment, you don't need to have a sub page. If you want to experiment with it, fine. But if you have a project, it has to be an, uh, organized, distributed the content across multiple pages. Once again, to create a new page, you just establish the link to a page that does not exist. So you use square brackets, two to open, two to close. And then in this case, because you want your sub page to be dependent on, to start from your page itself, right? You have one page and you want to have everything underneath, then you don't place a column in here. Because if you did, that page would be dependent on the portal would be in the root, and you might not have permission at that level. Your permission might be limited to a sub area. So no column at the beginning. And then I could put my sub page, right? And that would be a sub page. What's interesting about the flexibility of DocuWiki is that I can create a space, an additional space, and within that space, I can create a sub page, meaning that with only one line of code, I create what in other terms would be a folder. And within that folder, I create this page here. And I could continue, right? Uh, I could extend this and with just one line, I could create empty containers. So essentially, if I make this my new page, all of a sudden I'm creating a, a container, which is a folder in my server, and inside that I'm creating another page. So I'm creating, I'm opening up a space. Of course, this container, my sub page, right now is empty, 
right? Because I'm just going there directly. So if I were to go here, it would tell me create this page, meaning you have an empty folder with no files in it. And if you want to make it available as an intermediate container, make it accessible, then you have to put some content in it. And we can show another example. So, I can call it folder 01, and then I can call this page 01. When I save this, you see that it's red because I've just created something that does not exist, doesn't have any content and therefore is not started yet. But when I click on it, this is where I go. I see right away from the top URL that the folder 01 is now a folder on my server and that's where I am in page 01 inside that folder only of course i haven't added any content so it tells me this topic does not exist but i have the create this page button and i'll put six equal signs to give it a title this is a sample page and six to close this page was created inside a new space. And those new spaces in DocuWiki are called namespaces, but they're essentially folders. And when I save this, now I have a page to show instead of a red link, the red link was replaced with the title of the page and I can click on it and continue and add more to it. Finally, how to add tags. And this would be the end of the part of the demonstration that includes features that you may want to include in your page for the assignment. One of the requirements for the assignment is that you add tags to that page. So let's go to the new sample page, edit this page. This is another plugin that relies on curly brackets. And you have to place the curly brackets at the beginning of a line. Then you type in lowercase the word tag to add tags. And of course, you'll need curly brackets to close this. Now, whatever you place here, whatever text you place here will become a clickable tag, meaning that whatever you click on that tag, all the pages associated with that tag will come out. And there are only two rules to remember. You just add tags, separating them with blank spaces commas will be added by the system. The system will make them clickable. If you have a phrase instead of a single word that you want to use as a tag, two words, three words, then to keep those words together as part of the same tag, instead of spaces, you have to rely on underscores. So I can put here testing or tests, right? And I separate these, these would be two separate tags. But if I want to separate CCS from 395, then I need to use an underscore. And in here, I can use, of course, I can also use uppercase letter, lowercase letters, anything. And when I save now, 
a line was created. Now, tags don't need to be placed exactly at the end of a page. You can place them at the end of a paragraph. Uh, anywhere in the page It's just common standard to have them at the end of the page unless you have a strong reason uh, for uh, the insertion of tags after a paragraph because those tags, after all, it doesn't matter where you place them, they're always connected to the page itself, never just to a paragraph. Now I have a symbol that indicates tags, and you see that commas have been inserted where space is where, and a blank space has been inserted where an underscore was to keep together CCS and 395 as one tag. And as I said, if I click here, then I have a list of pages that have that tag. This, this is very limited, but the idea would be that having a large number of pages, you would have only a few of them shown in here. And you can also configure this plugin. For example, in this case, you just have when the, the page was modified and the name of the user who modified the page, but uh, the template allows you to have a summary of the page, and the summary would be some text taken from the beginning of the page, which encourages good practice, which would be to have at least a few lines, maybe two or three lines at the beginning of each page, explaining to the viewer, to the visitor, what the page is about. You could have that summary uh, also uh, placed in here so that you could look at this list, imagine that this list belonged 20 or 30 pages, and then find exactly what you were looking for. Now, the relevance of tags is clear, right? Because tags are ways to link pages based on their content. They are semantic links. Fine. You understand that, you find that in WordPress, in all kinds of apps and websites. The most powerful effect, outcome of the inclusion of tags, though, is in reference to this mechanism, which is essential to a knowledge-based wiki, which is called Transclusion. Transclusion is the creation of a page with dynamic content, a page that doesn't have any text, only has placeholders or links, dynamic links to other pages so that the page, when you access it, will import whatever content is found elsewhere, right? And you can have separate small pages and one long page where all that content is displayed. One of the options for the include, include app plugin that produces transclusion is to import pages with a certain tag. And that's where you have the maximum extent of a dynamic process where you can have a catch-all page that will always be up to date with all the content that is tagged in a certain way. I'll show you from this demo. Let me save this first. Okay. And you see, you notice that the page was telling me that my lock was expiring, right? One of the principles that we didn't discuss for any wiki, including DocuWiki, is that there is no simultaneous concurrent editing of the same page by multiple users, which means that if you open a page, no one else will be able to access the page and make changes because those changes would create conflicting versions of the page. However, let's say you are the average user who opens a page uh, five o'clock or 5.30 comes and, and you just shut down your computer and leave and the page now you were working on, you've left it open and no one else can access it. Now to compensate for that, to prevent that from becoming an issue, the system has a built-in clock, which I can change. I can set up after a certain number of seconds when a page that was locked by someone without saving 
will be closed automatically by the system to make it accessible to other users as well. Okay, and that's why I had, since I had opened that page for long enough, uh, the warning message was telling me that my lock on the page was about to expire. You don't need to do anything other than edit the page. Once you edit the page again, the clock is restarted, right? But otherwise, if you abandon the page, the page eventually will be closed and make, made accessible to other users. This is a series of screenshots with about the plugins. And this shows you that from any page in order to access plugins, you go as the administrator, you go to the top right corner where you read the link called admin. And this is the screen produced by admin that shows you that you can regulate access to pages, you can create user accounts through user manager, you can configure the settings of the wiki through configuration settings, and you also have in here the extension manager. And this is the extension manager, it has multiple tabs. The first tab is simply a list of plugins that were installed in your wiki, some of them at the very moment of the installation and others that you can add later. Shows you what templates you have installed if you want to switch between one and, the, one or, or, and another. Uh, and search and install would allow you to search the database of plugins which resides on the server for docuwiki.org and add them to your uh, wiki. Manual install would allow you to install a plugin from another server, not the official server, but let's say a private user has created a plugin for DocuWiki, they'll provide a link for the download, you use that link for the manual install. That, that's not advisable, right? Because every plugin that is <coughs> listed by the official website has been tested and therefore you have the compatibility information, whether it's compatible with your version of DocuWiki, the conflict listing whatever uh, plugins it conflicts with, and, and therefore the safest uh, opportunity, the, the modality would be the official search and install. As you can see, the list uh, will have also for any plugin that is added to the system later to uninstall or temporarily disable. And if there is a new version of the plugin, you also, we'll also find update, an update button there to update the plugin, right? And you see here, same opportunity. That's the search and install. So if you know the name of a plugin, in this case, page list is a plugin that supports the tagging of the pages. It supports the production of the index, the list of all the pages with a tag. You type page list, you don't have to type anything else. And just by typing that, the software will retrieve all the plugins that are associated with that function. And you find the official plugin and an analog plugin. In this case, you can see how I wouldn't be choosing this because uh, the version is older, not too many people have downloaded it, and here I can see how popular it is among users, how recent the version is, and more information. And once I click on install, in a matter of a second or two, the plugin is added and a green flag is shown that telling me that the plugin was successfully installed and now I can find it inside the list. Or in the case of the plugin tag, I type tag in there and I find various options. I install, in this case, the first one. I receive the message with a green flag telling me that it was installed successfully and I have it now added um, 
Here I show another example of a nice plugin. It's called Discussion. Well, there are several options for that. The Discussion plugin allows you to open a page for discussion, meaning that users who visit that page, you can make it so that only registered users, users with an account within the wiki can participate in the discussion, or you can open the discussion to anyone as long as you want, and at some point you can delete the discussion, hide it from the viewers, or you can close the discussion, all the comments will be visible, but no one will be able to add their comments. Okay. Include is the plugin that allows you the transclusion, meaning you build a page dynamically that has no text, but imports text from other pages, which means whenever the other pages are changed, those changes will be reflected in the transcluded page, etc. And you see many of the plugins that I added there. And as I showed you before, whenever you add a plugin, there is a section in the wiki syntax that is updated. This is the end of the wiki syntax page where you find links to all the plugins so that you can see instructions about their use. So the actual instructions are not brought into the page, but they're available, they're just one click away. So keep that in mind that at the very end of the wiki syntax, you also find information about all the plugins that you have available for your page. This is the discussion plugin page, right? So if you go there, you would find instructions on how to have a discussion section, right? You have two tildes to open and close this in this code. And then in this case, all uppercase discussion that opens a section where people can participate. And from the, from the configuration setting, you specify whether people who are registered can discuss or everyone visiting the page. And then discussion column off would just hide the discussion from the viewers. And discussion column closed would close the discussion. No one can participate, but all the comments are still there. And as usual, using the vertical bar, you can add a title to the discussion between the vertical bar and the two tildes that close that code. And maybe another time I can show you how that is done. This is the configuration for the discussion. This is where you, for example, allow comments by unregistered users, but why would you want that? right? Your page would be vandalized within minutes. In this case, allow guests to read comments. You want everyone to read the comment, but only registered users uh, will be able to participate. And more options are shown there. This is an example of the instructions available for the include plugin. This is for anyone working with DocuWiki uh, on a project, the final project of the semester. Again, you use curly brackets. So you would have a page that is completely empty, and I'll show that next Wednesday. However, when you open it, we'll have content. That content is being imported. The simplest level for the include plugin is to write after the curly brackets the word page in lower letter and then followed by angular parenthesis. And then you can put the internal link to a page or even just the link to a section. And depending on how you use the code, the whole page will be transported in this page, will be called in, the content will be fetched and imported. or if you use the reference to a section, only that section will be brought in. You can bring in a namespace, meaning a folder. Which this means that all the pages in that folder will be brought into this page. So you might have one line that translates into a 30 pages long page. Or you can do several other things. The important parts, 
besides page, you wouldn't bring an entire folder worth of content into the same page unless you have specific circumstances with warranting that kind of action. But the other important thing besides using page to import another page is to use this code tag topic followed by an angular parenthesis and include a tag which means that every time you tag a new page with the same tag, you can then have a collect all page with transclusion that is always updated, is always refreshed, will always, whenever you visit it, include all the content associated with a tag or a group of tags. And there are many other uh, details that you can find in there. This is the tag and I've shown you the tag, and there are, of course, I've shown you the basics for the use of tags, but there are other details that you can find to do more complex uh, things. Finally, one of the most common plugin in DocuWiki is the wrap plugin that allows you to do all sorts of things with the formatting. It's very popular and compatible with the latest version uh, of DocuWiki. And once again, if you visit, if you click on the link at the end of the wiki syntax page, then you can access all the instructions. These are some of the things you can do and some of the codes associated with it. You can create boxes with different symbols. Those can be in the middle of the page or it can be inside a line, a separate line, right? And, and there is much more, including complex way. For example, you want to center your quotes in the middle of the page, you want your quotes to be at a certain distance from the margins. All of those things can be done with the wrap plugin, which is added to the test wiki and therefore is also available to you. That would be the conclusion of my demo today. I just want to know, since we have a couple of minutes, if you have questions about the assignments or comments and questions about this app in general. Yes? Are we gonna have to make a sub page for the assignment? No. No, if you want to experiment with it, you're fine, but otherwise it should be just one page, as long as it is one page with different sections and a page including meaningful text, and also things such as lists, external links, embedded video, images, uh, etc. The text could be italicized or bolded, uh, etc. It's up to you to review what I've demonstrated and to pick up uh, as many of the features. I've listed some of them in the instructions, but you can do more if you want to.